It's now my pleasure to introduce Diana to you. She is the financial program manager at the Heltry Foundation, and she specializes in financial help for multiple myeloma patients, AML patients, and now has expanded to other blood cancers as well, like CLL. She's a professional financial advisor and former caregiver of her husband who was diagnosed with multiple myeloma, multiple myeloma, excuse me, and she perfectly understands the financial issues facing cancer patients and desires to help them. So that being said, Diana, thank you for the time and the preparation that you've put into this webinar. I'll turn the time over to you for latest financial updates. Great, thank you, Audrey. Thank, uh, thank you everyone for joining. For those over there on the East Coast, it's, I mean, yeah, far West Coast, it's still morning and um, mountain time, still morning, but we are now in the afternoon here in Louisville, Kentucky. And we're enjoying some rainy weather today, but it was yesterday almost 80 degrees. So we're kind of confused as to what to wear, what to do, and <laughs> she's repairing our garden. So it's kind of confusing here. Um, One thing, Diana, before you keep going, you're a little quiet. So I don't know if you want to move the microphone a little closer to you. Is this any better? A little bit. Yeah. It might just be on my end. So our audience can weigh in as well if they're, if, if it's just okay. me. <laughs> okay. So um, thank you again for joining us. Um, I wanted to discuss on our financial updates, there may be, there's a lot coming down the pike, um, it seems to be bigger changes as far as um, healthcare companies gobbling up other healthcare companies. And there were some really big ones out in the West Coast. So it, and it can affect your care. It, it can affect whether you need to travel more, whether they're going to accept your insurance. So Sometimes, a lot of times they will notify you. Other times if I've found people who are not being notified that they are no longer in the same medical group. So keep your eyes open for that. I don't want anybody to find themselves without treatment or with a, um, with a period of time where they can't get treatment or don't know what to do. So you can call your healthcare provider and ask them if they anticipate any changes coming up. But please um, keep up to that. Keep, keep up on that. That's a huge thing that's coming down the pike, and it's it's happening all over. It seems to be more recently than later, especially if you're out in a suburban or rural area. Some of those regional hospitals are being picked up. So please watch out for that. So I wanted to go through taxes. It's something <laughs> that we love doing this time of the year, right? It's the most wonderful time of the year. Um, I would say not. A uh, wonderful time of year is when kids are going back to school and Christmas, right? But this time of the year, it can be very stressful. And we look at preparing for our taxes for the following year, but we're actually preparing means actually doing. And that would be either, either yourself or your professional who's doing it on your behalf. What we all should be looking at is planning for our taxes for the following year, which you could be in the process of doing now because that way you can anticipate what your taxes are going to be and you can maneuver either investments or what you how you take your income or savings or things that you can do to reduce that tax liability for next year. So I encourage everyone to start looking at what they anticipate their taxes are gonna be and find out how you can minimize that tax impact, especially for next year. Let's go through what all of this means. So how can you maximize your medical deductions? That's going to be the big part that we're going to focus on today. But in other cases, there are some other things that you can do um, to, to, to minimize your taxes. And you know, with cancer, paying for things out of pocket is very expensive. But there are at least one thing positive that can come out of it. You can write off some of the deductions or out-of-pocket costs you have if it's over 7.5% of your adjusted gross income. So you got to you got to go over your adjusted gross income of 7.5% and then anything above that, then you can, you can uh, write that off. So you need to keep all your receipts. Everything you do, if it's travel for healthcare, we're going to go through this a little bit more in depth, but keep all those receipts and start planning now for next year. So I want to tell you, I am not a tax professional. I know a lot of things about taxes because I have to do it as a financial advisor. So if there's anything here that you want to get in more depth about, with your taxes that are specific to you, you might wanna to talk to a tax professional. Next slide. So we hear these terms, deductions, exemptions, and tax credits. What are they? So a deduction is a tax deduction, is an amount of money that can be deducted from your tax income. This is a form of tax incentives along with exemptions or tax credits. Now exemptions, we all know there's a standard, standard exemption, a standard deduction. Exemptions are tax, 
are transactions that are free at the federal or state level or even local level, level, and they're showing your income tax return for informational purposes only. It doesn't show anything um, big as far as negatives or positives or red or black on your tax return. Tax credits are huge. These are some of the ones, this is some of the best things you can get on your tax credit. It's dollar for dollar. The amount you subtract for your taxes you owe. This can lower your tax payment or increase your refund. Some credits are refundable, meaning they can give you money back even if you don't owe taxes. So let's say if you have a, you're a low income earner, you can take that low income tax credit and there's a, there's a amount that you can claim as a tax credit. Even if you didn't earn enough to pay enough taxes that, that will cover that, you're going to get a tax return back. You're going to get taxes back or income back for that tax credit. Tax credits are actually some of the best ways to get money back on your taxes. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't file all of their tax credits. They forget about the low income tax credit, the child tax credits, their education credits, especially if you're a teacher. There are credits that military people could take if they move. There are all kinds of tax credits that people seem to forget. If you owe on um, student loans, put money into a retirement plan, and you have until April 18th of this year, because this taxes are due on April 18th this year, to put money into a traditional IRA that can still go off for the um, tax year for 2023. So if you want to reduce your income taxes, if that's going to affect you getting grants for this coming year, you might want to consider doing that now. So if you invest in, invested in a clean vehicle or you did some clean energy renovations at your home, you can write that off. If you buy health insurance in the marketplace, that those premiums can be written off. And if you apply, have any other personal tax credits, if you have a parent or grandparent that you are responsible for financially at a certain amount, then you can write that off. So there's a lot of things that you can do that people seem to forget that they can take advantage of on their taxes. And the credits are the best way to get income back on your taxes. So let's talk about, next slide. Can we talk about some of these um, credits? We just, we already went through that. Um, these are tax credits you can take. Let's go through some of the deductions. Now, standard deductions for this year, if you are filing as a single person um, or married, filing jointly, uh, separately, it's $13,850. That's what you can claim if you're filing as an independent or single person or you're married, filing separately. Now, remember, if you're filing separately, you have to maintain the same kind of deduction or um, um, itemizations on your tax returns. If you are a married couple, the standard deduction is $27,700 for 2023, or if you have a qualifying surviving spouse. So if you lost a spouse during the year 2023, even if it's December 31st, you can still claim them on your taxes, or even January 1st of the previous year, you can still claim them on your taxes for the 2023 year. Um, the standard deduction for a head of household is $20,800 for the tax year of 2023. There are other deductions if you're 65 years old or older and are blind or blind, or if you have a, a dependent on your household that you complain, that you claim. So that could be a grandparent. I used to claim my mother, um, who was in South Carolina, I used to claim her on my taxes because we we supported her financially. So um, those are huge things you need to um, be aware of. Again, keep receipts for everything, keep proof because you may have to show this if you were unfortunate enough to be audited. Next slide. So what are medical expenses? And uh, we seem to lose, lose an idea of what that is. And it's not just premiums paid. This would include the cost for your healthcare insurances if they aren't deducted as pre-tax dollars from your paycheck. So if you're an employer, a lot of that is pre-tax. Um, Doctors' offices, co-pays, deductibles, dentists, hospital stays. Next slide. Diagnostic testing, prescription drugs, medical equipment. Medical expenses that you pay for your spouse or your dependents, including a qualifying child or relative. So if you still have children who are on your taxes, you can claim on your taxes, or, or they're in college and you're paying for premiums on their behalf, for their, for their um, health care through the college, or you're paying for any kind of dental or, or vision care for them, then you can still claim that. 
Other deductions you can take that people seem to forget are alternative treatments. So if you go to an acupuncturist or a chiropractor or any other non-traditional medical practitioner, including Christian science practitioners or other alternative treatments that are ordered by your doctor, as long as it's ordered by your doctor, those are considered medical expenses and can be written off or claimed on your taxes. We seem to forget, of those, forget about those things. But again, keep receipts. You can go to your doctor's offices and they can print out everything that you did last year. So you can have something without those individual things. Adaptive equipment. If you've had any stem cell transplants, you know how weak it can get. You may have to have some additional equipment that you wouldn't normally use for a short period of time, like maybe a wheelchair or bath chairs, bedside commodes, other items needed for a disability or conditions are deductible prosthetics, artificial teeth, hearing aids, TTY equipment and devices if you have a hearing um, um, impairment. Next slide. The cost for newborns, and I think Audrey's got, Audrey's going to um, look at these things, cost in excess of the cost of regular formula. If you needed to have um, some special formula, and my sister had to do this, she had a preemie that was in um, NICU for 116 days and got out a few months ago, and but they still have different formula that this child needs to have or or um, nutritional supplies that, that you may have mailed to your home, nursing supplies, prescription formulas, all of these things are tax deductible. And then there's diabetes related cost. This may be something that unfortunately, if you take a lot of steroids, you might find yourself medically diabetic induced. And you end up with blood testing kits, strips, batteries, insulin. Next slide. All of those things to do with the cost of keeping up with your diabetes. Keep a cost, a uh, 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 itemized list of these things, and you can get them for wherever you get your your supplies, and you can write those things off. Ear and ear related conditions, just like your ear exams, eye exams, glasses and contact lenses, including prescription sunglasses as cleaning supplies, um, LASIK surgery or keratotomy, braille books and education to learn braille or lip reading, hearing aids and batteries, all of these things. I know it's almost like you're nitpicking, but those things can add up and it can really help you reduce your tax liability. Next slide. So home improvements, and this is a capital expense. This is a cost to install permanent features to your home to accommodate a disability, such as ramps, modifying doorways, modifying your cabinets to lower cabinets or remove cabinets, adding support bars. Um, these are a lot of things, some of these things my, I did at our home for my husband. And some reason, and there's some things that we wish we could have done and didn't realize that we could have done because it would be tax deductible. Um, but these are things you need to be aware of, especially not just for disability, but as we continue to age, we want to look at our surroundings, um, our flooring. Are we going to have carpet removed because the doctor said or your therapist says the carpet is not what you need to be walking on or you need more access to your shower? You can have your showers um, refitted or your bathroom pull bars and and opening doorways so that you can have access to your house, lowering cabinets, which including lowering um, maybe your, your burners for your stovetop, things like that can be modified and those costs can be written off on your taxes. Next slide. Lodging to receive medical treatment. If you spend more than $50 per night per person, um, you can write some of this off, but meals are not included because you got to eat anywhere, no matter where you are. So the meals are not included, but the cost of the lodging is. So meals and lodging at a hospital, if you're at a hospital, not if you're hotel, meals and lodging at a hospital or similar institution, if you're there to receive medical care can be written off. Other settings may be deducted if you meet all of the following requirements, not just part of them, but all of them. The lodging is primarily for and essential to your medical care. So if you had to go to a different city or a state to get a stem cell transplant and or you had to get a, a stem cell harvesting and you are doing um, off campus, but you had to stay close, that lodging would be considered for medical expenses. The medical care is provided by your doctor in a licensed medical care facility not just to go see someone um, like a alternative specialist that's 
could be you could have seen in your own home. The lodging, it cannot be lavish or extravagant under the circumstances. So you don't want to go stay at the crown, the crown, whatever it is, and, and when you could have stayed at Holiday Inn Express. The stay isn't for personal pleasure, recreation, or vacation. So you can't combine this as in a vacation when you're going to get medical care because then it will be considered not medically necessary. Next slide. Attending medical conferences. You know that we have roundtable conferences um, you, or, or meetings. You can deduct the cost of admission if there was admission. We do not charge admission for hours. And if you need a transportation to a medical conference, if the event is related to your, your spouse's or your dependent's chronic illness. So if you were to attend a roundtable dealing with muscle myeloma and you had to come from out of state or a different city, then that can be written off your transportation. It's usually done by mileage. Most of the time attending the conference must be spent attending sessions on the medical information that is related to you, your spouses, or your dependents' chronic illness. Meals and lodging are not deductible, only the transportation. Organ transplants. So medical expenses for the care you receive as a donor or possible donor of an organ. Any expenses that you pay for medical care as a donation to you, your spouse, or dependent. Transportation costs related to the transplant is included. So if you have um, someone who is donating their marrow, bone marrow and they had to transfer there for that, then yes, they can be their transportation and their medical, the cost related to, to their, trans, their the, the transplant in your behalf is tax deductible. Next slide. Home care. For someone who is unable to manage the activities of daily living, like toiletries, bathing, eating, all of these things are considered daily living. The cost of a personal attendant to help you with those personal care can be written off. The cost of caregiver meals and additional costs for home upkeep, such as extra utilities, or rent if you had a larger person, that person had to live with you for that period of time to help with the activities of daily living, that can be written off as well. I have I had a um, patient last year who had someone take help them for a period of time and they had a carriage house. So a carriage house that was not being used. And it was like, a, it's like a over the, we call it a carriage house, it's over the garage um, um, facility, but it had its own living room, bathroom, um, all of those things, kitchen, and they let that person stay there for a period of time. They were able to write off the additional utilities associated with that. So substance use disorder treatment, cost of inpatient meals and lodging, transportation to and from facility, or the treatment meetings are included in your tax deductible expenses. Next slide. Reproductive health. This becomes an issue if you are a younger diagnosed person and they want, especially if you're a younger diagnosed person and you want to um, make sure that after a stem cell transplant and chemotherapy, you're still able to have children, you can um, take the calls, you can receive or write off the calls for storing um, eggs and things for future um, pregnancies. You can write off birth control pills, pregnancy test kits, legal abortions, again, that's qualified legal, vasectomies, fertility treatments, lab fees, and temporary storage of eggs or sperm, surgery costs for reversing a prior procedure to prevent pregnancy. So those things are considered medical expenses and can be written off. Next slide. Service animals, which has come, you know, with all this in the, in the news about um, and stress and people are getting animals to help them, there, there's a difference between service animals and other animals. You can deduct the cost of buying, tra buying, training, and maintaining a guide dog or other service animal that helps someone who is deaf or hard of hearing, visually impaired, or have other physical capabilities. This would include the cost for the food for that animal, the grooming, and the vet care so the animal can perform its duties. So there are those comfort animals. Those are not considered service animals. Service animals actually help you maintain your, your daily, daily living things, and you wouldn't be able to do those things without them. Next slide. Dental treatment. You can detect the costs associated with preventing or alleviating dental disease. 
And um, if you're taking any medications, and I know I've had patients call me and they said that some of the medications they're taking them is causing problems with their teeth. All of this, the cost out of pocket, everything that you pay for this can be written off on your taxes. So the payments to the dentist, to the um, dental hygienist for teeth cleaning, sealants, fluoride treatments, x-rays, fillings, braces, extractions, dentures, and other dental ailments can be written off. Another thing is really big smoking cessation programs. You can deduct the costs associated with stopping smoking as long as the doctor just prescribed the treatment. Next slide. So some of the things you might find have an issue with is some of the foods that you eat. You may be, your body may be changing um, depending on your treatment where the, some foods you were able to tolerate, you may not be able to tolerate now. And if you need to have condition specific foods, um, then that the cost for that will be written off. Conditions such as celiac disease, obesity, or hypertension that require specific foods, that food must not satisfy your regular nutritional needs and must alleviate or treat the illness. The need for the food must be substantiated by a doctor and you can only deduct up to the amount that exceeds the cost of regular food. So if you have a problem with gluten and you all of a sudden now you have to do gluten-free foods, we understand that a lot of those things are more expensive. Um, there's a lot of things out there, especially, and you might find it may be more expensive because you may have to go to a whole food store regular that are, rather than a regular store. So you can write off the difference between the cost of that, that um, food versus the regular cost, the cost of regular food. And you may find that if you do that quite often, it may be very significant. The next slide. So children with learning disabilities, and, and this could be huge if you still have younger children at home. If you have a dependent child or a child that you claim on your taxes that has a learning disability, you can deduct the cost of testing and tutoring for that child when it is recommended by a doctor. Tutoring must be conducted by a teacher who is trained and qualified to work with children with learning disabilities caused by mental or physical impairments, including nervous system disorders. You can also deduct the cost of tuition, meals and lodging of attending a school that offers programs to help children with the learning disability. And that could be a person who's dyslexic, which is a learning disability. Um, and they may have additional um, um, tutoring outside of the regular school system. You can write that off. Next slide. Travel to doctors Pharmacies and therapy sessions. This is huge. A lot of people seem to forget that. Some people have to go to the doctor several times a day. I mean, several times a week. So you want to write off the cost um, of the gas. You can deduct the cost of air, car, bus, train for the travel to and from medical and treatment. And that includes Ubers and things like that. If you use your own vehicle, you can use the IRS set mileage rate and can include your out-of-pocket cost for gas and oil. Now, I want to warn you on this. If you're, if you're using your own car, go back and forth to the doctor and you make sure that you keep your receipts for your gas, keep your receipt, and you may want to have a log in your car to write off when, the day, and how much and how far the mileage is. That way you can be, be um, have all that information when you file your taxes. Again, this is the difference between preparing your taxes, which means you already have everything in order and you're just sitting down preparing your taxes and planning your taxes for the following year. You can start doing, making sure you do this for the file for 2024 for next year. You can include weight loss programs. If your doctor can confirm that your weight is a threat to your health, then any weight loss program is deductible. You can deduct only separate fees to a gym, which is geared toward weight loss. So if you have a personal trainer you've just been going to, that is not necessarily considered toward weight loss. It, all this has to be confirmed through your doctor and your doctor's going to write off. Yes, I suggest that they go to here. Yes, I told them to do this. Yes, I told them to eat this. Yes, I told them to, to take this medication for the weight loss. Next slide. Wigs. The cost of wigs due to hair loss for medical conditions such as cancer treatment or alopecia can be deducted if purchased on the advice of a doctor for the patient's mental health. And, you know, we all know if you go through chemotherapy, a lot of your times you're going to lose all of the hair on your body, even your eyebrows. Um, good way to reset, right? Um, not a good way, but it's a way to reset. And you can you can wear wigs if you have to buy a wig for um, for your mental health until your hair starts growing back. That is actually deductible. 
The next slide. So when to itemize. Again, it's advisable to keep all of your medical records pocket out of pocket receipts in order to claim these deductions and have them to refer to if questions are asked by the IRS. Anything you itemize, please make sure you have receipts. Also remember, you cannot deduct any medical costs paid for a re or reimbursed through grants. So if you've got any grants from LLS or from Health HealthWell or for Cancer Cares or any of these other organizations, you cannot deduct those grants and they, they do not go towards your deductibles as well. Next slide. So again, I just went through this. They cannot be, those taxes, those uh, grants for pharmaceutical companies or nonprofits cannot are not taxable. You don't write them on, on your taxes. It's a gift towards you. And um, so you cannot count that those, you cannot count the expense that's paid for by the grant on your taxes. Next slide. So our flexible spending accounts um, contributions, are, are they deductible? No, they're not because they come out before taxes. However, your entire FSA contribution is deducted out of your pay before taxes. That's why it's pre-tax, thereby reducing your reportable tax income. So if you're paying through a flexible spending account or through your um, payroll deduction before you get your check, then no, it is not tax deductible. You actually reduce, reduce the type amount of income that you're going to re report to your taxes. You can't get a double hit. Next slide. Medical uh, flexible spending accounts advantage or a tax dedu deduction. The medical FSA is more adv advantageous if on your tax return, your eligible expenses exceed 7.5%. The funds your medical flexible spending account are exempt from income taxes and FICA taxes. So they come out pre-tax and you also don't pay FICA tax on them as well. Next slide. Are health savings accounts contributions deductible? So health savings accounts can receive contributions from your employer, from eligible individuals, or anyone else on behalf of the member. So if you have someone who's put it, giving you money to go into a health savings account, the contributions to that health savings account, other than the employer contributions, are tax deductible to the member, whether or not the individual itemizes the deductions. So this is something that a lot of people do not are not aware that they can do, um, that other people can help participate in their um, contributions to their um, health savings accounts. And these things are, are not, they don't go away at the end of the year. You can continue to roll those from year to year. And some of those things can be invested in, in if you look at participating in a health savings account, maxing out the amount on that now or the next couple of years in anticipation of retiring and um, your medical, your insurance is going to change where you're still going to have a lot of out-of-pocket co cost then you'll have this account set up for you. And then you can take it out tax-free to you to take care of those medical expenses. Next slide. So you need to qualify for grants next year. One of the things you need to do is look at your current and anticipated income. If you anticipate having a stem cell transplant or having a CAR-T and you're gonna be off of work, then you know your income will probably drop for a period of time if you're gonna be out for an extended period of time. Are you looking to look, are you being tax efficient with the income from assets such as investments accounts or pensions or anything out there? Are you becoming, are you being as tax efficient as possible with that income? Can you rearrange some of those assets so some of the assets, the income from that asset is generating tax-free income? Are you talking, are you taking income prior to age 72 from qualified accounts that you don't need? So um at age 72, you have, to, you have to take required minimum distributions from qualified accounts, pension accounts, um, IRAs. That does not include Roth. Roth can, you don't have to take money out, um, required minimum distribution out. But you might want to look at, if you're not 72 years old, if you don't need that income, then don't take it. Are you still working and would like to save more and reduce your tax liability? You can do that by including increasing your exemptions or reducing your exemptions, depending on what the need is maybe saving more of your um, your income? Are you providing financial help to someone else? If you're doing that, keep receipts on that because then you can write them off on your year's tax return. Next slide. So looking ahead, so we're, we're still kind of early in the year. I know a lot of people have already filed their taxes. A lot of people run and run and do that as soon as possible, get it behind them. 
And if you found that during during this um, webinar, you found there's things that you forgot about, you need to go and do an amended taxes. You can do an amended taxes back three years if you find you're gonna you can um, get a better tax advantage. Some of the things you did not claim, and you can still get income back from three years. After three years, you're pretty much out of luck. So if you're really close to exceeding that 7.5% threshold, over 7.5% of your adjusted gross income, there's still things you can do. You can contribute to your IRA for 2023 year if you're still working. You have until April, I'm sorry, it says 15th, 18th, and before you file your taxes for 2023. If you do an extended, ex, extended tax um, return or file later, it still has to be done by April 18th. This can reduce your reportable income. Are you claiming all of your donations from 2023? Did you contribute to charities? Um, did you donate things to like United Way or Goodwill? There are things that you can do to redo, to file as itemized deductions for that. So start preparing for next year's and planning for next year. If you work with a financial advisor, let them know what your out-of-pocket costs are going to be. Let them know you know, ask them what you can do to re reduce your tax liability. Keep receipts because if you are audited, they are going to ask for them. Speak to your tax, again, again, speak to your tax professional about all the options you may have available to reduce your or minimize your taxable impact. So that's what we have. I'll be glad to take um, any questions. Again, I am not a tax professional. I will Throw that back to you. Because I can only answer general questions and refer you to someone if you needed additional help. Wonderful, thank you, Diana, and thank you again for preparing all of those slides. I uh, echo Diana's comments. If you have questions, please submit them to our Q and A, and I will do my best to um, moderate those and get them answered for you. The first question that we have here is: even though. I just get Social Security, which I'm assuming is Social Security Disability, and made over $25,000. Do I still have to file? If you have Social Security Disabilities, you, you still have to file. Yes. What, what would be an instance in which you don't have to file taxes? If you have very, very low income, let's say you made three thousand dollars, you can you can file, but especially I would still do that even if you have tax checks tax credits or low income credits, because you can still end up getting significant money back, even sometimes more than what you actually made, which is kind of hard to believe. Um mm -hmm. or if you have other qualifying um um income that's tax free income to you. There are some people making investments as tax-free income. They just have a, they get a 1099-R or um, you have to report that, but you may not have any taxes that are due. Awesome, thank you. A uh, question here, I'm gonna share the slides again. What was the $50 figure for launching for medical care? If you wanna um, just revisit okay. that. So let's, let's say I live in Kentucky. If I had to go to, um, let's say Indianapolis, Indiana for treatment, then my lodging, I can only write off $50 per night per person. So if if me and my spouse go, that's still $50 per night for the lodging. Okay, thank you. At that point, meals are not included. But if yeah. you're in a hospital facility or a similar institution, if you had to travel for that, then you can write off meals and lodging. Interesting. It gets tricky. This is why working with a tax professional is so exactly. important. Um, if someone's no longer working, but they have income from a rental home, can they put the proceeds of the rental income into an IRA to reduce their taxable income? Passive income. Um, a lot of people do that. I would talk to a tax professional and, and you might want to be very careful with that. And it depends on if it's in your home that you're renting out part of the time or if it's a separate home that you're renting out, I would refer all of those kind of questions to a tax professional. And how does one go about finding a good tax professional that's familiar with things like, in you know, this abundance of medical expenses and things like that? Because, I mean, you could choose anyone, but is it recommended? Is there is there a place where they could find someone with this kind of expertise? Yes, there are CPA. Um, you can, they're, they're, they have I'm not going to call unions or clubs or whatever. You can 
you can go through with CPAs and find someone. I caution anyone where somebody puts a shield, a, a sign outside that says, I do taxes, be very careful because some of those people are just putting, you know, they thought they could do taxes and so they're making money. When it comes to being liable for what they do, you're going to be on the hook. They're not going to stand behind what they do. Be very careful. Person says, I do count accounting or I do, you know, find somebody who's actually certified to do that. If your taxes are very, very easy, the IRS has a has a new uh, program where you can have IRS, the IRS program, taxes can be done free online. They're going to catch everything in your behalf. So I, I would advise you if there's options like that available, take advantage of those because they are free to you and they'll catch everything. Interesting. Thank you. Uh, Suzette says, you mentioned deducting medical premiums. What about deducting out-of-pocket co-pays, deductibles, et cetera? Yes. Anything out-of-pocket is considered part of your expenses. Jeff says, you mentioned the 2023 standard deduction is 13850 Are there additional amounts that can be deducted if you are over 65 and or single? Thanks. Um, there are other deductible expenses. If you have alimony expenses, um, business use of your car or business use of your home, if you have a business, if you put money into an IRA that I mentioned before, as long as you're working, um, you have gainful employment, you can put money into an IRA. Um, you can put money in a health savings account, penalties on early withdrawal from savings, student loan interest, teacher expenses. If for some military or government workings, workers, self-employed with people with disabilities or work-related educational expenses like teachers, they can write that off. Um, military for moving, they can write off their moving expenses. And there are other things you can write off as well. People forget you can write off bad debt, um, canceled debt on homes, capital losses. And this is where the planning comes in versus just preparing for taxes. If you, last year, a lot of people took losses in their accounts, but they may have still been taking money out of their accounts as so they see their accounts drop. This year, your accounts may be going up because the market has been recovering. And so now you may have, when you had negative last year, now you have a big excess, may have ex excess this year. You can write off losses against gains. So you may write off that tax that might be um, um, you may be responsible for. Um, gains on the sale of your home, gambling losses, um, home mortgage interest is one of the big things you can still do. And income, sales, real estate, and personal property taxes, you can still write off. You can also write off state and local taxes, depending on what state you're in. So I would look at that. If you're in an area like Texas, California, um, Florida, where you have a lot of costs related to disasters, the cost to rebuild or refurbish, all of those things are tax deductible to you. So keep receipts in those in, in instances like that. Those those are big ones you can you can write off. Is the only option standard deduction or itemize, or is there a way that you could like increase that standard deduction? Those no, the standard deduction is what you, the IRS puts out there every year. Um, but there the some of the deductibles you can do whether you take the standard deduction or not. If you can still itemize, are those teachers' expenses, money put in IRAs, things like right. that. So you can do the standard deduction as well as itemize, put those things in. All those other things, if it's above 7.5%, it's to your advantage if it's going to be more than your standard deduction. And those other things that go with that, then it's to your benefit to analog to itemize. You can have it run both ways to determine which one you want to go with. Oh, interesting. That would be beneficial. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, Linda shares that AARP does free taxes for seniors. So that's a huge benefit if you are an AARP member. Um, and then another thing here, they said, great job, Diana, which I echo. IRS free file is for adjusted gross income less than $79,000. So just, um, you did mention that resource, but just clarifying that you would have needed to make 79,000 or less. And that's adjusted, uh, so that's not your gross. That's your adjusted gross after things yeah, come adjusted out. adjusted gross. So mm -hmm. that can include a lot more people. Right. Yeah. Very well said. Joette says, we had to adapt our shower for me in 2023. Needed a shower seat, grab bars, low step in, et cetera. Is that deductible with receipts? Yes, it is. Now, I had a follow-up question to that. Is Can those home 
home improvements or home adoptions or whatever we're calling them, does it have to be directly related to the myeloma? Like you have to prove I had a stem cell transplant and this weakened me and therefore I need it. Or could it also have to do with the general aging where, wow, I'm just not able to step over that tub like I used to? Um, if your doctor makes a recommendation that these things need to be modified in your home for you to live there, then then it's going to be considered as a medical necessity or a deduction. If you just want to start doing it because, you know, I'm, I'm 50 now and I want to stay in this house until I'm 90 or until <laughs> I die, then no, probably not. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, Ruth was wondering the kid's college tuition. What is that? Uh, all she put was kids college tuition, but I'm, I'm guessing that she's asking, is that, can you deduct that or depends on how those kids get it. And this is another CPA. If you gift that money to them, you can do gifting to, to, um, to family members or friends up to a certain amount every year, or you can do a, a lump sum for five years. I think it used to be $55,000. Um, and you're doing that for like for five year lump sum, then you can write it off you can, as a gift to them, they're going to have to claim money as taxes, but then you can write it off as a gift to them. To them. Interesting. Okay. Again, see your CPA. I am not a CPA. I am not a tax advisor. I'm just giving you general information. <laughs> <laughs> disclaimer, disclaimer. No, I think you've made that very clear. And I think your information is really helpful. And then they have a base or even, you know, I have a base where we can start, uh, you know, I love what you focused on is, yes, we're talking about preparing for this 2023 tax filing, but also what are we learning to help us for that 2024 tax filing? Because being proactive and how we approach our taxes um, is, is going to benefit us in the long run. So I do appreciate that. Okay, so Sherry's asking for a clarification. If she invests into an IRA prior, prior to April 18th of this year, can she can reduce her gross income by that amount for 2023? Yes. When you there's a there's a line on the first the first page where it says, Are you contributing to an IRA? You put the amount on there. Now remember, IRA is not the Roth IRA, it is a traditional IRA. This is money that you're paying prior. So if you, you got your check, you say, I want to go open to the bank and I want to open up an IRA. You can contribute that money to the IRA. You can contribute it for the prior year, if it's before April 15th or 18th, or you can do it for the for um, the current year of, of 2024. So you still have time to do that. And yes, it does come off your taxes if it's done for 2023 up until April 18th of this year. It has to be done before you file your taxes. Otherwise, you're going to go back and do an amended tax return. Mm -hmm. And I appreciated your, your clarification. There's that traditional IRA that is pre-tax money that's invested. And then there's that Roth IRA, which is post-tax money. And the benefit only comes if you're in that traditional IRA. Is that correct? Did I yes, understand? to write it off, to write it off. Now, even, even if you had, you've got your money after taxes, you got your, ta your paycheck, you already paid taxes, you have additional money you want to put into IRA. In order to, to write that off, you can, you say, I want to put in a traditional IRA. You can write that off because now it's after taxes, right? But later on, you're going to pay taxes on it when you start taking money out of it. It's going to be taxable. So you're not getting a double write-off. Awesome. Thank you. To your advantage, though, to do a Roth. Just saying. <laughs> come out tax free. Even, even the earnings on that will come out tax free later on down the road. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I I concur with that. <laughs> even though I have no financial expertise, we put everything in Roth. Well, I don't see any more questions here. So, Diana, I'll just turn the time over to you to do any closing announcements, and then we'll just uh, end a little early tonight. Or well, today. one of the things, not, oh, today. <laughs> not, not yet, not yet. Um, <laughs> one of the things I want, I'm getting a lot of questions for people regarding the um, the grants. They have, everybody knows the LLS has been reduced significantly to $5,000 and they were open for a short period of time in January and they're now closed. Um, a lot of others are closed as well. I'm having a hard time finding, I'm checking on those daily and I'm trying to expand my list. And it's, it's like, um, it's like, finding a needle in a haystack right now. But remember your 
out-of-pocket maximums are going down for your Part D, especially for people with Medicare Part D. Uh, I would encourage you, if you could put money into a health savings account, if you know that your out-of-pockets are going are going to be high um, for your type of insurance through your employer, if you have a high deductible amount, take out that healthcare savings account. It is really, really, really going to benefit you down the road now and later on. I mean, it's going to be huge for you down the road. So if you can figure out a way to do that, work with someone who can set those accounts up with you. Even if it's only $50 a, a, a month, it's going to be very beneficial for you down the road. Um, the reason why, and we think it's because the, the out-of-pockets are going to be less and these nonprofits are trying to reach more people. Even if those are not available, don't forget, if you still can't pay for your medications, to reach out to those pharmaceutical companies to get those financial grants. McKeeson, M-C-K-E-E-S-K-E-S-S-O-N, can help you with the linalidomide. Um, I need to make sure that is put on the our um, financial resource page. They can help with the linalidomide if you cannot pay for that out of pocket. It's still very expensive, even though it's a biosimilar. So keep up with those things. Even if you don't feel like your pharmaceutical company can help, um, call them anyway. If you're working for your to get your rev limit and your Medicare and you still can't afford the rev limit and you call and they say, I'm sorry, we don't have any grants, ask them for the Medicare Foundation, the area for Medicare that has grants because they do have it for Medicare recipients. It used to be different, but now it's, you have to ask for the Medicare. I don't know why, but please do that. Don't feel like you're going to be left holding that big a back big expense when you really need to have your coverage and treatment. Definitely. And I'll just echo and say, you know, this is, these are big topics. These are, you know, it's like financial toxicity is a real thing. And what we're trying to do is provide resources to combat that, right? It is a stressful thing to talk about filing taxes. They don't make it easy on us on purpose, unfortunately. Right, right. One of the resources that Health Tree has are these financial coaches you can meet with one-on-one -on -one for free. Diana is one of them. She'll be going out of town for a little while, but there are other financial coaches. If you're feeling stressed about this and you're wanting to make sure you're accessing all of the resources. Now, again, these are not tax professionals. So this is not in lieu of a CPA that's able to help you with your taxes. But if you need to connect with somebody who understands what it's like to have all of these myeloma expenses and who can guide you towards some of these resources for your prescription drugs and other things that Diana has just been discussing. We're going to include that in our follow-up email so that you can set up that one-on-one -on -one free um, just meeting. I don't want to call it a consultation or anything with um, these people who have had um, financial experience and are willing to share that with, with others who are in the same situation. Well, Diana, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that you have a great rest of your day. You're welcome to go to my audience. I'll finish up with just a couple of outro announcements and then uh, we will finish up for today. On May 7th is our next meeting and Diana will be discussing how to change your lifestyle to reduce spending. Um, other upcoming events that we have tomorrow is a stem cell transplant event. We have three people coming to share their brief stem cell transplant experiences, and then we'll open it up to questions for our audience. On the 14th at 1 p.m. Eastern, we have our kidney involvement chapter. We're going to be talking about if you can get a kidney transplant with multiple myeloma. And then on the 18th at 1 p.m. Eastern is our immunotherapy treatment chapter. We're going to be getting a real-world CAR-T data update. The link to sign up for any of those events and even more events that I have not mentioned is found on the bottom of the slide and will be included in that follow-up email that I was referencing. A special thanks again to our sponsors, Regeneron, Sanofi, Johnson & Johnson, GSK, and Bristol-Myers Squibb. And thank you to each of you for helping us build this community. I hope this webinar was beneficial to you. And again, we're always here to help and we care about your well-being. So take care, everyone. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.